synagogue was built on top of the synagogue. Then we drove back down to the top uh, and now we are at Capernaum, right? We are at Capernaum. So if you look right over here at Capernaum, you will notice that we're south of the road to Damascus. We just got off that road and we're traveling at Genesis Lake and the north of the lake. Yeah. Another thing you need to know about Capernaum in the days of Jesus, this was a border town and it separated between two different brothers. One of them is Herod Antipas, the guy who beheaded John the over And then we met the other brother over here yesterday when we went to Caesarea Philippi. That would be Herod Philippi. So two different brothers, two different kingdoms, burning right in the middle. So, as a city, built next to the lake and right on the border you could expect uh, different kinds of populations to live here little brother and you would expect to find here roman soldiers being a border town tax collectors next to a very important trade route and of course you got a whole bunch of fishermen right north of the lake and leave the gospel to mention our view of that so that's what kind of population let's go and see how the house is Okay, brothers and sisters, behold the city of Capernaum. Not much trespass, but it's the first time in the world. It looks kind of similar to Kurazim. Same style, same time frame, same people. Now, if you look at the houses over here, Pretty poor as well. Um, it seems like a refugee camp to me, the way they're built so close one to another, the main road going there. And uh, back then, that was the lifestyle that you would live. The father of the house, he would probably build the original house. And then all the sons, when they'd get married, they would build into the father's house by using one of his walls as a support and just building on to that. Today the Arabs still live like that, but they build floors above. Every son builds his floor above his father's house. The women, they go and join their husbands. Uh, all of these houses, what you see is the foundation. You gotta imagine that they're another meter and a half, at least two meters, maybe even high. Uh, they were all covered by a roof. There was logs going across the walls. And then you would have uh, reeds going across those logs and palm leaves like that and like that and then you would have uh, some uh, a small amount of uh, dirt and putty packed on the walls again just to keep the sun and the rain off your head you probably have seven souls living in a house like that can you imagine in your mind how it would be higher and how it would be covered with the roof 
You can imagine that. Good. And now come put me over here. Put you here. And look at this house over here. The phone. Oh, come on. So, if you can imagine how those houses would look, you would understand what happened over here at this house. By the time Jesus comes here, first of all, remember how he comes here? He's rejected from Nazareth. They want to kill him. Why? Telling them the truth. What did he tell them? You're right, by the way. The scripture is fulfilled in your ears. The scripture is, is that why they wanted to kill him? Yes. No. Yes. Well, who's the father? He said that and they marveled at the gracious words coming out of his mouth. Something he said after that, then they wanted to kill him. Talking about the Gentiles, exactly. Maybe you are the guy we've been waiting for, from what I understand. But if you're the guy that we're waiting for, and now you're talking about us loving Gentiles, because he gave the example of the widow and the example of that Assyrian general, how God's great. No, you're supposed to save us from the Gentiles. Yeah, and it took me years to understand that until one time I had an overload group and I had to bring a Jewish guide, my friend actually, and uh, since all the group were together, and he said to me, that's like telling the Jews to love the Nazis. That's hard. So they wanted to kill that man. The Romans oh, are oppressors. The Gentiles are oppressing us. And you're, you're supposed to be the Messiah, our deliverer. In our mind frame, it's some military guy to set us free. But they uh, know they wanted to kill him after they heard that. So he comes down here, and this is where he would live in this house. And after he has done so many miracles, the feeding of the multitude, killing people, raising people from the dead, he became a superstar at that point. People from all over the Galilee, the scripture says, even from Damascus, Tyre, and Lebanon were all coming over here. There was many, many people around the man at this point while he was staying here. And there was one man, friends, wanted to save him, and they knew they had to bring him to Jesus so he could be saved. And they came here, but there were so many crowds around, there was no way they were going to get in there. So they decided, they had them on a stretcher, they were going to pick them up to their waist, and then they're going to pick them up to here, and then they're going to pick them up like that, and they're going to pull them up with ropes on the roof, and then very carefully they're going to walk on those beams until they reach that house, and then they had to roll up the roof like rolling up a rug, and they would take one of the beams out, lower the man down into the house. And Jesus sees that and all the effort that those guys went through to save that little man. And he said, your sins have been forgiven. Just get up and walk. And then the Pharisees around. Who does he think he is to forgive sin? Who Did they sin against him? They sinned against God. Who is he to forgive his sins? So just to make it easier for those six of us sort of standing around us, it might be easier if I just say, get up, take your bed and walk. And sure enough, he said it. And sure enough, it happened and it took place at that time right over here. Are there any questions? This is where he healed Peter's mother. Larry, why do I have to keep waiting for somebody to say, how do you know this is the spot? Okay, so, modern day, many Hebrew and Jewish people, they don't like the God of the Gentiles, Jesus, because they think Jesus is a Gentile. Believe it or not, many Jews do not even know that Jesus Christ was a Hebrew. In John 4, Jesus told the woman at the well, salvation is of the Jews, Jesus of the tribe of Judah, in the line of King David. Okay, so when they get, gives them a reason to hate Christians because of what Hitler did in the name of the Catholic and Lutheran Church in World War II. Brother, I don't in, think they need a reason, but in, to be honest. <laughs> but in, the, in, was it 95, November 95 or 96, an Orthodox Jew, in Israel, assassinated the Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin. Now, were the Catholics and the Lutherans in World War II doing what Jesus said by helping the Nazis? No. 
was the Orthodox Jew who assassinated Yitzhak Rabin doing, following the law of Moses? No. So there's many that they might have a veneer of Christianity or Orthodox Judaism, but they're not real believers because they're not doing what the person they're following taught. So it's, there's two sides of that fence. True, true. So and I learned know? that from a Jew, a Messianic Jew. So. so how do we know this is the right place? So how do we know this is the right place? So and uh, whenever you want to come and uh, determine a site, it has to abide by three factors. Uh, the first one is the preservation of the name. And this place preserved the name Kfar Nahum. The village of Nahum is what it's called, actually. Uh, when Robinson discovered it in the 1800s, it was just a tell, which the Arabs referred as Tel Hum, keeps the name of Kfar Nahum. Uh, the second factor that it has to abide by it has to be the right location. Uh, from what I have learned, there is a Jerusalem in Texas. If that is the Jerusalem that uh, Solomon built the temple in, not 100% sure, but it has to, this place does fit the right location, just like it's described by the historians in the New Testament. It is north of the lake, it is south of the road, right in the Galilee. And of course, it has to abide by the right time frame as well. Uh, Jerusalem, Texas, if you dig there, I don't know if you're going to find anything that dates back to the Bronze Age, but over here, indeed, it fits the right time frame. Uh, we can date it by coins and pottery, which is pretty much 100% to the days of Jesus, and we actually know that it existed about from 200 BC all the way up to the 7th century when it was destroyed by an earthquake, and I like to add, like Jesus prophesied concerning. But anyhow, this house, if you look at it, there's something else as well. If you look closely, you will see that somebody built a wall around that house. And then they built a second wall around that wall. And we're actually standing on a third wall that goes around those two walls. And these walls do not take into account the layout of the city. They actually go through houses, they go through roads. What this is, is an ancient Byzantine church with the crypta, like the Holy of Holies of that church, being that house itself. Inside of there, there's a whole bunch of uh, graffiti mentioning Jesus and Peter and Peter's house and Jesus living in that house. And there's also all kinds of documents, diaries of early, early pilgrims that came here in the fourth century saying that when they visited Capernaum, they actually had a chance to go into Peter's house and have a service there. So most likely that indeed, 99.9% .9 I would say, is the house hmm. that Peter I don't know if you remember but Peter he writes about long suffering in his uh, letters and he knew about it because he lived with his mother-in-law <laughs> just make a funny that's all but Jesus comes here and he heals his mother-in-law and then Peter denies him three times but, uh, just joking, joking, making fun don't tell mom I said that come on <laughs>